Hey, it's Sandy Rask. Let's come alive. Let me just let the dial spin for just a second to make sure you guys all catch up with us. Come on in. We're in Shea Harrison. It's a great kitchen. Looks like it might be coming through. Hang on. Hang on. It's coming. I'm live. This is awesome. All right. Hi, I'm Sandy Rask, and this is the Food 2.5 Kitchen on the Road. Today, we're in um, Doug and Kim Harrison's beautiful kitchen in La Jolla, California. And Doug, as you may or may not know, is the CEO of Believe Health, um, the company that he and I have co-founded and the, um, the home of the Food 2.5 program. So welcome today. We are so excited to be here and we're going to be making, hey, Julie, wow, from South Korea. That's awesome. That's awesome. Oh, I'm so excited to be making, making soup with you. Catherine, hey, how are you doing today? Um, yeah, so we're going to make um, a blonde guest. Ying yang. So good to see you. You're going to love this soup. You are going to absolutely love how many vegetables we are putting into this. This will be rosemary. Yes, I am like down the road from you. Hello to San Diego and John. So good to see you. This is awesome. Oh my gosh. Wait till you guys see this recipe. We've got it all started. Um, you know, I have done onions in a pan so many times that I went ahead and got them started so we can get to the end of soup at, uh, at the end of this show. But before I get any farther, let me introduce you to our host and hostess today. So come on in, Doug. Come on in, Kim. This is great. I'm so excited. Hey, look at this, Doug. Oh my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> As if I'm not challenged about Hey, this is Doug and Kim Harrison. This is everybody. Their, this is their beautiful kitchen. <laughs> so, so well, uh, phenomenal, Sandy. <laughs> you <do> phenomenal cooking. <laughs> You're not here, so we're gonna do all the eating. Yeah, <laughs> oh, we're too excited. Yes, this is great. This is great. So we're today making meatball soup, and they're gonna help me make it because there's a. It's this is gonna look like a daunting recipe, but it's so simple because you know food 2.5 is twice the flavor, half the calories, and so we have to go for the flavor in every step of the way um, to make this this work. Um, I call this a blondigus. It's kind of a nod in the direction of um, a Latin soup, um, but it's just my version of it. So I mean, with all due respect to everyone out there who's made a true um, a blondigus, I'm gonna I'm gonna change it up a little bit. Okay, so in the pan so far, let me bring the pan over so you can see because this is this is cool. Actually, here I'm going to turn this this way so you can see you can see where we're headed. Look at this. All right, whoa, so beautiful. All right, so what I've got in there are onions, garlic bell peppers and poblanos and if you've never had a poblano this would be the time to try it let me just do it one more show all right and this is going back on the on the stove you know what i did i started with just a little bit of avocado oil it's my favorite kind of no flavor oil so it gets started in the pan then we put the vegetables in i tend to put the garlic in with the onion so it doesn't burn you want it to flavor but not burn and now you guys know the next step because I've done this enough times. We're gonna put the spices in. So today, let me just get them. Today what we're cooking with are three things. All of these you've seen before. So cumin, because it's just good. Um, smoked paprika, again, this is gonna put the smokiness in there and a tiny bit of spice, but not too bad. And then here's my favorite, harissa. So again, this is Moroccan, so we're gonna cross borders just a little bit, but this has smoked paprika in it, so we're gonna double up on the smoked paprika. Has a little bit of chili spice, just a tiny bit, and some dried mint, and that dried mint is so pretty. And you're gonna see we're gonna put fresh mint into the meatballs. So we've got spices, let me get those in. And you know, I don't measure, but this is, this is important. This is the, this is the soup that we're gonna put a lot of liquid into. So we've got to overspice the onions. So I'm gonna put, I've now put about two to three tablespoons of the harissa. Okay. Then another tablespoon-ish of cumin. And just another, another hit of smoked paprika. We got a brand new jar here, look at this. Let's see if we've got one that's open. Nope, all new. 
I've done, I've done this before. <laughs> this is awesome. I, I have done this a few times. All right, let me show you the pan one more time so you can see how much spice is in here. Because this is, this is where a lot of the flavor comes from. Look at this. Whoa, there you go. All right, so I can already smell it. Putting the spices in on the, um, on the hot vegetables really gets it going. So we're going to turn up the heat just a little bit. Get those really going. Let those, what are we doing? We're going to let those spices blossom. It's going to take just a minute. And then we're going to put the rest of the vegetables in. Cook. We're going to put liquid in, let it all get happy together. And then we're going to make meatballs and cook the meatballs right in the soup. And within about 40 minutes, we're going to have a done soup. Now, if we go too long, we don't actually get to the end of the soup because there's a chance. We may not get all the way to a finished soup before the show is over. Um, what we'll do is, is uh, we'll finish cooking it, and then we'll do a really short video of tasting so you can see how it, how it feels at the end. Um, other things that I have, okay, so those poblano chilies, let's check, talk about those for just a second. You could do this, this soup with just onions and bell peppers if you're averse to spice. But if you wanted to test just a little bit of spice, Poblano chilies are a really great one to test it on because these are not, they're just barely more spicy than a, um, than a bell pepper. And they give really, really good flavor. And just for interest, if you like ancho chili powder, those are smoked versions of these. These are poblanos. I know Miss poblanos, but sometimes you see them in the grocery store as pasilla. So these are a great pepper. Then the next thing, let me spin you just a little bit so you can see down the cutting board. Next thing, we've got beautiful heirloom carrots. Whoa! Look at these. I, I have to say, I prefer the purple ones. I don't know why. I think because they're just cute. Um, but I do give preference to purple carrots in my life. Um, I've got a couple of zucchini that are cut. And then the last, just to give this soup a little bit of body, I've got potatoes. And I did these beautiful red potatoes. Um, and we did these because they're real thin skin, so they, they aren't going to be hard to cook, and I didn't have to peel them. I literally just took and diced them up. So this looks like a lot of dice, but I got this dicing done in about, what would you guys say, 30 minutes? 45 maybe? Just because we were talking. I haven't been here in six months. So, <laughs> so we had to catch up over soup. But next, let's just see. Okay, this smells right, so I'm going to put the carrots in. Just so you're ready for the next step, once we get all the vegetables in, we're going to coat them in spices, and then we're going to put the liquid in and just let them simmer away while we make meatballs. Not too much work. Not too bad. This is kind of a fun party food. I kind of find most Latin food to be really good party food. I called this um, flavorful peasant food earlier today, which I, I actually think that's a pretty good description. This is just kind of a dump. Let it all marry in the pot and come out gorgeous. We're just going to keep going. I may not put all these zucchini in because I'm looking at, at, the, at the pot and I want to leave room. Yeah, I'm going to put some of the potatoes in. We want to leave room because what we're going to do is form the meatballs and then put them into the soup raw. Now, if you're plant-powered, vegetarian, vegan, anything and then you know just trying to be more plant aware um, you can stop at this step put liquid in and eat this soup this is going to be a beautiful vegetarian soup but what i like about the meatballs in it is one i like a little bit of protein but it also the fat and we're using chicken today so it's not a heavily fat like a sausage or a beef um, but that little bit of chicken fat that comes off the meatballs cooks into the soup and gives it kind of a really nice Functuousness. Is that a word? Do I need to make that up? All right, let's show you the pan one more time because I'm going to put liquid in over the top and I just want you to see what this looks like. Whoa! Look at how pretty that is. All right. Yikes. We have, oh, thank you. <laughs> Did you see me suffer? I don't know where everything is in this kitchen yet. <laughs> you would think with how many meals we've put together. All right, 
So filling up our pan, our, our board here, we are now at a point, a little bit more, let me just stir, make sure these are all cooked. They're all coated through. And now what's gonna happen is the liquid's gonna simmer and it's gonna cook those potatoes, it's gonna cook the carrots, it's gonna cook the zucchini so that everything is soft. So I'm gonna start with, I've got eight cups of water, this is plain water, but you know me, it's not gonna stay water for long. And I'm gonna put about another four cups in. We'll see, I don't want this to bubble over. Well, um, but I want this to kind of come, come close to the top. 12, 12 cups. This is gonna be a beautiful pot of soup that's gonna feed us for quite a bit. All right, gorgeous. Okay, so we're gonna let that come to a boil, then we'll drop it down to a simmer and we'll just let it cook away while we make meatballs. Um, but I forgot the last thing. So I put spices in. What I would normally, and you all know, I don't leave things in plain water and you need to flavor at every level to make the soup good. Um, I would normally use chicken broth and I couldn't get a good chicken broth that I liked. So what I brought with me is a really good substitute in a pinch. And this is called Better Than Bouillon. Now, if you all look at the label, you're gonna go, what, Sandy recommended this? It's got maltodextrin in it, it's got natural flavors. Um, this is not my everyday kind of soup, but this is like, you know, I wanna get a quick soup together and put a lot of flavor in it occasionally. I'm gonna put a couple tablespoons of this in, in place of, of chicken stock. So let me put a little bit of that in. We'll let it just cook with everything else, but this is really gonna flavor, flavor the soup. Although, if you look at, here, I'm gonna, I'm gonna pull a little of that broth up. Because if you look at this broth now, it's a deep, deep red. And I haven't even put the tomato paste in yet. So we've got a little bit of that, better than bouillon. And then, I've got this, I've got tomato paste. So this has no spice in it. This is just gonna add a little bit of sweetness and a little bit of body to the, um, to the, to the broth. So tomato paste, and I like it. You can see it's in a glass jar. This is my favorite. I like glass jar tomato paste way more than I like, um, like it in a can. Because the acid in the tomatoes is just, okay, we're gonna turn this around. And I'm just going to go ahead and put this whole jar in, because this is a very large pot of soup. Then I'm going to bring the, the pot of soup over one more time so you can see the color and see what I'm making. There we go. Oh my gosh. I'm making a mess of the counter over here. This is so worth it. Okay, I don't think I'm going to carry this whole thing over, but let me get a, let me get a scoop. I'll show you what the broth looks like. Look at that. Look at that. Look at how gorgeous that broth is. That is, it's, it's already got tons of flavor in it. It is, it's tomato-y, it's a little bit spicy, it's got the depth from that harissa and from the cumin, and all the start with the onions and the garlic. This is, this is beautiful broth. If you did nothing but drink that broth, you're in great shape. So we're just gonna now let that just do its thing. We don't need to do anything else to it. We're literally just, we've almost got a soup that we could eat on its own, but we're gonna make it better. Well, next step for us is going to be making meatballs. So let me see. Let me make a little bit of space here. I'm out of my element a little bit. <laughs> but I've got, I'm gonna make meatballs in this bowl. I've got down at the bottom, and you'll, you probably saw this on the shopping list. I've got parsley, I've got cilantro, I've got fresh mint, and I've got this beautiful lemon zest. That I, that I added to it. This is gonna look really familiar because this is exactly what we put into the ground lamb for the, for the Greek nachos. We're gonna do the same thing. So we're gonna put, um, today I wanna make sure I had enough. Um, I have three pounds of, of ground chicken. I have one whole bushel 
I guess is the right word. A, you know, when you buy parsley and you buy it in a, you know, um, a bunch. It's not a bushel. Oh, bushel thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Doug. A bunch of parsley, one, <laughs> and two bunches of cilantro. Look at that. That's awesome. And then one container of fresh mint that I just just lightly chopped up, and then the zest off one lemon. You've seen me do it, so I'm not going to do it again here. But that's the starting point. Then we'll put all three pounds into this. The next step after this is to um, is to add a little bit more flavor and add a little bit of binder. So roughly the proportions are one egg to every pound of, of meat. So we're gonna add three eggs to this. Um, and then we're gonna add some dried um, shallots, because they're kind of my favorite and I like them. They'll, they'll add a nice sort of you know oniony flavor to it. And then a little salt and pepper, and that's it. So we've got that. We're gonna, let's see. Ah, I've got a fork. Oh, and rice. I forgot to talk about rice. We can put those into the meatball. This is so, um, I got this. All right, so here is, and we put a little bit of rice into the, um, into the meatballs as a binder. And then what happens is you put that meatball into the soup raw and it puffs up and it cooks and it makes the meatball so light. Um, I've chosen today basmati. Um, you can use any kind of white rice that you want. I wouldn't use brown rice in this, even though I like to eat brown rice more than white. Um, but I like the white rice because it cooks through. And what I like about basmati is that it's low glycemic level. So it's actually better for your body than a regular, like an arborio white rice or a jasmine white rice. It won't um, turn to sugar as quickly. So half a cup of of um, basmati rice for every pound of meat. All right, so that went in. Then I've got our eggs, and I'm just gonna I'm gonna beat them slightly so that they go in easier. That goes in. I've got the spices underneath. Then these beautiful is that close enough? Can you see that? These are dehydrated shallots. So rather than dried onions, I got these beautiful air-dried shallots from Penzi's. And you know how I feel about Penzi's. Great company. Love them. And oh my God, the smell of these is incredible. So how much am I gonna put in? I'm gonna put in, it's gonna be about the equivalent of quarter to a third of a cup. Maybe a little more, because I put a third pound in there. That's it, that's all there is, okay? So then we mix and we make meatballs. Ooh, the big pan came out. <laughs> no, I'm doing okay. All right, I'm gonna go hands in because this is the easiest way to, to mix these. And then you all are gonna remind me to wash my hands. Because <laughs> there have been times that I have forgotten. And then I have these cool, I'm gonna show you the scoops that we have. We're gonna make these meatballs so quickly. They're gonna just totally come together. And let me, while I'm mixing, because I can do two things at the same time, let me just see what you guys are saying. Oh my gosh, Mar Rosemary, this soup is the best. <gasps> Cynthia says, hi, Doug. <laughs> she Hello. Says, Thanks for the kitchen. <gasps> Kim, you're on. <laughs> I love that. You guys say hi to Kim Kim Harrison. She's, she's in messaging with you guys. <laughs> Ooh, Catherine, I love that you're a soup whore. That actually makes me like you even more, if that's even possible. <gasps> Kimberly, Kimberly's in Central California. She's got a poblano tree. Oh my gosh, I didn't, wait, it's a tree? I thought they were bushes. Is it, are you just saying it's a tree because it's that big? That's awesome. Because I pay a fortune for my poblanos at the grocery store. So, <laughs> oh my gosh, yes, I know, Ying, I know you love purple carrots. That's awesome. What about golden ones? What about golden ones what? Potatoes. Oh, got it. Yeah, golden ones would work beautifully. Any kind of potato. If it has a thicker skin, I might be um, tempted to take the, um, the skins off of them. But the skins are where all of the, um, all of the nutrients sit. So I kind of like you know picking ones that have um, skins on. But before anything, what I love even more is using what you have in your fridge so, or, or in your pantry. So use the potatoes that you have. Oh, I love this. Oh my gosh, yeah, Rosemary, you gotta put your grandbabies in the kitchen, don't you? That's awesome. And you like better than bouillon? Yeah, you know what? I love the flavor of better than bouillon, 
But if I'm truthful, if I, you know, I don't like the ingredients that they have. The organic is a little better than the standard, but it still has stuff in it. You guys know it has the um, all natural flavors, which you know there's nat nothing natural about it. That's where they hide all the chemicals. And it has maltodextrin, which is a byproduct of the corn process. And I'm, anyway, you know. Um, it would be better if we had a good chicken broth, but I didn't have that today. Okay, so let me hold this up and then I'm gonna wash my hands. Look at that, we have meatballs. All right, I'm gonna put this down here. And wash my hands. The soup is doing beautifully. Oh, perfect, thank you. Thank you, this is great. Oh my God, I don't have kitchen help when I'm at home. This is awesome. <laughs> this is me dropping things putting them everywhere where I'm making messes. All right, let's go to the other end and make meatballs, okay? I'm gonna, I'm gonna slide this so that we can get to, you can see we're gonna go to that end down there. And then if we have time before you all go, I'm gonna make a food 2.5 cocktail too. So let's, uh, let's get some soup making. All right, come on in you guys, we can make some meatballs. All right, I have, I have this, they come in a variety of sizes. You can right now on, on Costco, I've seen, or on Costco, on Amazon, you can get a um, three pack for like 20 bucks. Um, and these are the best. This, these make making meatballs so fast. With three with three pounds, we can probably make, oh, probably close to six dozen meatballs. Okay, we'll do that one. Right. And it's gonna go fast. We're just gonna do it. We did a parchment line uh, pans. But I don't want to do it. <laughs> I don't want really to do it. And I'm going to clean up a little bit. <laughs> the mess I've made here. So they want to invite me back for more. <laughs> Absolutely. It's so much work. Why do we have to do it? Right, stop whining. Yeah, exactly, right? Oh, yeah, I got awesome. the best stuff. Uh, it smells really good. It really does. Oh, that's good. Good to hear. Let me just... It's always so fun to have Sandy come. Oh, my gosh. You, you okay. spoil us. Oh my gosh, well, you can't see because I've got you on the meatball making crowd, but I got it to a boil. I'm now going to take it down to low and just let it simmer. But what we're going to do is test. Now what you'll notice is I didn't put any salt and pepper in. That Better Than Bouillon has a ton of salt in it, and I knew that a few of the spices had salt in it, um, and we had chili pepper in there, so I didn't want to really compete with that. So, but here's the, here's the soup broth. I'm going to check it, make sure it's, you know, see if it needs anything. That's the, that's the story. I'm sticking with it. Oh my God. It's only been going for 15 minutes and it's so good. And it's just going to keep concentrating. I wish you guys could smell and taste this. Yeah, it does smell so good. Oh my gosh. So the drug is correcting me on my meatballs. You're doing it right. Except they're not. They're acting up. They're fine. They're going to go into the into the soup, and if they unpack in the soup, it's not even a big deal. They'll just go loose. So don't even... Uh, yeah, we don't have to worry about this criticism. Why do you always say curbside? I, I know. I, oh, my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe I am better in my own kitchen. I just have barking dogs in mine. <laughs> that was fun. Oh, cool. You guys are doing great. Okay, then relatively soon, we're going to... We literally put these raw in the soup cooks them and that fat is just going to go right into the um, into the soup. It's so cool. We have Miss Sandy oh. coming here because whenever she comes we have an amazing experience and her flavors are so good as you guys know if you've been following the recipe. <laughs> so good. Amazing. That's awesome. That is awesome. My, my biggest fans right here. <laughs> As opposed to my kids who are telling me that they need to go and learn how to cook and they, they're going to go to YouTube and watch some videos. I was like, what? <laughs> what? <laughs> All right. Did you want me to get these more closer together? I guess I can. You can. I'm just filling in between. But you guys have enough that I can, I can I'm going to move off of you guys for just a second. We're going to go right over here, back to the to the pot, and I'm going to steal a pan. I'm just going to steal a pan. You and Doug can keep going on those. I'm such a slave driver. Okay, so here's made meatballs. Did you see how fast? They haven't been working at five minutes, and we're going to have like dozens of them. And I'm just going to drop these into the soup. 
Now, for vegetarians, if you were thinking, hey, why don't I make some, um, some vegetarian or vegan meatballs? And there are some really good options out there. In fact, I've given you one, which is a combination of sweet potatoes, um, black beans, and quinoa. And those are really good. What I would, would want to do is I wouldn't put them into the soup at this point. I would bake them separately, and then I would serve soup over the top of them. Um, so that would be a, a really good option if you wanted to, to keep this completely vegetarian. And then obviously you'd have to use um, veggie stock. But yeah, these are, oh my gosh, this is going to be so good. It's just going to come together. Like we're almost done with work on the soup. The soup's going to just cook itself um, as soon as we've got, we've got meatballs in here. The only trick to the meatballs is when you put them in, you want to make sure that you, you don't pack them on top of each other. So you have kind of a plan to, um, you know, rotate around and let them all kind of just, just flow in. All right, this one's just a little small, so I'm going to put him back here. I'm going to give you an empty pan. I'm going to take a few more of these. Um, do I say that Doug's balls are bigger? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Let's hope so. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm not going to put all of these. We're going to go ahead and we'll make a second pot of soup and, um, and, and make the rest of these. What I would probably do with these, um, the ones that we don't put into the, into the pan of soup, is I would freeze them like this. And then the next time I make soup, I would pull them out of the freezer. But do you make my balls better, Sandy? <laughs> Oh my gosh, I think you have to have that conversation with Dr. V. I, <laughs> and yes, I recognize I opened the door on that conversation. Kim says my balls are the best. That's good, that's good. Oh my gosh. <laughs> oh my gosh. All right, Facebook auditors, if you're listening to this. <laughs> okay, I think, that's, I think that's probably good. I wasn't counting. Six, I probably put three dozen in, and they're going to finish with another three dozen. Um, so just so you've got a sense for it, you can see in the pot um, what you want to do. They want to float right at the beginning, so what you want to do is kind of press them down and in. They'll take about 20 minutes, and we'll check them. They can't, you cannot overcook them. The very worst thing that would happen is they could fall apart, um, but they're not going to because they have that egg binder in it, and it's. And if you don't stir too hard at this point, you're going to have beautiful whole meatballs and they are they're going to puff up because of the rice they're going to um, be light and airy um, but they're just just beautiful so the question is while we're finishing um, if you guys want to hang on for a few more minutes what I thought I would do <laughs> hey Carla is oh angel oh good hey yeah that's rosemary I, I thought I would make a food 2.5 cocktail um, so the, the way um, that we do cocktails in a food 2.5 way, drink whatever you want, drink whatever you want, no judgment. I feel like we need to do a public service of don't drink and drive, but um, if you choose to, to drink alcohol um, and you want to do it in a diet-friendly way, um, what we generally do is um, do less sweetened uh, mixers with it and do more, um, uh, do more citrus uh, squeezes on it and do really high quality alcohol. So the, the way alcohol works in general is the, the better the quality of alcohol, the less you need to mix into it to, to make it drinkable. So tonight, the cocktail that I thought I would make um, is with, it's very simple uh, and it's made with my favorite gin. Um, and for anyone who goes, I don't drink gin, I had a bad experience in college, or <laughs> whatever, um, I highly suggest you give gin another try, but don't drink, you know, baseline gin. Upgrade the gin to a really good one. And this in particular, this is my all-time favorite. This is, if you ask me, like, what I'd want as my final cocktail of my life right now, it's this gray whale gin. Um, I love it so much. The beautiful thing about um, small batch gins is they're making them very herbally. So they have this great flavor. Like if you just drink gin by itself, it tastes really good. So I tend to do two ounces of this gin over ice. And I'm going to squeeze a little orange into it and squeeze a little bit of lime. And it's going to be a beautiful, simple cocktail. And that citrus note and the herbal notes are going to pair super well with this soup. So give me a second. I'm going to put ice in here. So 
So I love these. I don't know where these came from, you guys, but these are nice, clear ice cubes. They're beautiful. Look at these ice cubes. They're, those are great. And let's see. Here, I'll hold it up so you can see. Yeah. Freehand, you know, just because. And at this point, you could put club soda in it. You could put um, tonic water. There's, You could put a bubbly Perrier if you wanted just a little bit of bubble in it. I tend to like it just by itself. I have half of one of these little miniolas, which I think are just really good. And if you come to Shea Harrison the right time of year, they have many trees of these growing on the property. Um, so we get great oranges. And then a little bit of lime. Thank you, you guys. Look at that. We have, look at this. We have a whole nother tray. I obviously did way too many, too much meat, but I can throw some more into the, uh, into the pan. I'm going to cut the citrus. Just a note, if you've got a nice knife, citrus acid is the worst thing for knives. So as soon as you cut any citrus, if you want to save your knife, uh, make sure that you wipe the citrus off of it right away. But that's it. A little bit of lime. Look at the color on that. Isn't that gorgeous? Here, I'm just going to drop the lime into it. Because limes don't have any seeds, so that it's perfect. All right, so there is food 2.5 cocktail, my favorite. Um, and I've got to make a couple more so everyone's got them. Let me check the meatballs. See how the ones that are in there are cooking? Really cool. Look at that. Look at that gorgeous. And they're about they're about halfway cooked. So with um, with chicken, we want to be super careful. I can see in the center there that it's still not quite cooked, but it's not even been been that long. So what I'm gonna do is we're gonna cook this for probably another 10 to 15 minutes. And when we get to the point where it's cooked. We'll come back on and we'll do a very short video so you can see the tasting and see the final product. All right? But that's it for now. I want to say thank you to, to Doug and Kim Harrison. Thanks for having thank us. You, Sarah. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you all for being on the show. We totally appreciate you um, being with us. I'm Sandy Rask. This is the Food 2.5 Kitchen on the Road. And please, if you haven't had a chance, I would I would be so appreciative for any likes, any follows, any reviews. If you enjoyed what you saw and you want to see more, give me feedback, okay? And I will, um, later this weekend, I'm going to post the, um, the recipes for the next week. If you have anything in particular you want to see, now is the time to ask. And then just you know, foreshadowing into the future, we're going to do the first two weeks in November are going to be all sides for Thanksgiving. So we'll do a variety of them, dairy-free, vegan, vegetarian, gluten-free. We'll do a whole variety of sides um, so you can be ready for your Thanksgiving holiday no matter what that looks like in this COVID world. And then going into December, I think we have to do some, some Christmas treats and some other holiday stuff. Okay, so that's it. I'll talk to you soon. Thank you so much for having me and, um, and, and um, having me in your kitchen. Bye now.